Hello, welcome to Sephra's world. My name is Sephra and this is my world. And today we're having an episode of Writers Behaving Badly, although I don't really feel like it's writers behaving badly. Maybe it's writing advice. Anyways, I read this article about a week ago and I did want to discuss it, but I've had a hugely busy week, so I, I'm just getting around to it today. This article, and I will be linking to it, was published... Uh, it was published... I actually don't see a date on here, but it was public. Um, I read it about a week ago. Uh, I'm actually not sure when it's published because I do not see the date, but it was popping up a lot on my feed last week, so I finally wrote it, uh, read it, and uh, I didn't really like it but then I've been thinking a lot about it and so I don't want to say it's bad or good it's just food for thought now for a lot of you who are trying to be writers or are writers or maybe you're an amateur writer maybe you're a professional writer maybe you're a hobby writer uh, the landscape is different for all of us and our goals and ideas are different for all of us some of us just want to write as a hobby some of us want to earn a little bit of money some of us want to earn a full income and quit our day jobs uh, some of us have never had day jobs put me in that category although I have little part-time jobs that I do to to supplement my career. So I feel like a lot of the advice in this particular article is geared towards writers who either work full time and ha or have a nice inheritance or they have a spouse who actually uh, will financially support them and will financially support any ideas they have about uh, promoting their writing. So this article was on a blog called Make a Living Writing, Practical Advice for Writers, and then now this particular article is how to self-publish a book that earns $125,000 in a single night. So yeah, raise your eyebrows at the title. So, you know, obviously clickbait title, but actually if you get to the end of the article, the, write, the writer did actually earn $125,000 in one night. And she tells us how she did it. And that's uh, great, but you know, it's again, a very much um, subjective related to our goals, related to uh, our incomes and so on. So let's go through this article together. Want to know how to self-publish a book that earns big? That's the dream for a lot of freelancers. Um, and so they, she goes on to say how when she self-published a book, you know, um, it's, you have to do some work. So she gives five book marketing strategies to earn big. Um, writing is the easy part for most freelancers, absolutely. <laughs> now when you're self-publishing, it really is very hard to market. And so she's trying to help us with that. It's the steps that come after publishing that can make all the difference in how much money you make. So come up with a marketing plan that generates buzz, sells copies, opens the door to more writing opportunities. So here's um, some of what she does. So number one, personally thank the people who helped you and this should be on your acknowledgements page. And apparently this particular writer, because she thanked people in her acknowledgements and then invited these people in her acknowledgements to her book launch, and she also asked these per people that she thanked in her acknowledgements page to pre-order the book, <laughs> which I think takes a lot of gall. Um, anyways, she said using this strategy, she sold 215 books and earned $3,225 just from pre-sales alone. Now, I personally have never had the balls to do that. I thank tons of people in my acknowledgments, especially uh, in my leisure books, because I figured I had a lifetime of help achieving my dream of having a leisure career. And uh, I thanked a whack of people. And I think to this day, a lot of people don't even know they were thanked in the acknowledgments because when I acknowledge someone, I acknowledge them in my book, they may or may not ever read it. I don't 
acknowledge them and then email them or write them or phone them and say hey I acknowledged you in my book so if you want to see your name in print buy my book and actually you can pre-order it right now I am not that type of person <laughs> if you are good for you I think that's not the way I operate and good for this woman who made three thousand dollars I would love to make that but I can't even imagine uh, yeah so that's balls number one right <laughs> balls number one thank the world in your acknowledgement and then get them to buy your book so they could see their name in the acknowledgements mm-hmm okay to host a book signing event connect to the bookstore in your area uh, reading and signing works, but you can get a little more creative. Um, she hosted a catered event and sold tickets at different price points for a signed copy of the book, VIP time with her, gift bags, and handwritten thank you notes. She earned $2,600 after she uh, deducted her catering and venue fees. She made $2,600 from book sales. Again, you got to have balls to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> to do this I can't imagine saying hey uh, pay 10 bucks and you can talk to me I mean I have a patreon and people can talk to me all they want people can talk to me on Facebook people can talk to me on YouTube people can talk to me on twitch for free to, to talk to me you can talk to me whenever I, you don't have to buy a VIP ticket but I'm doing it wrong because I don't have two thousand six hundred dollars in book sales for people talking to me this woman um, got it done um, I have had signing events I have had signings at bookstores and I've never had the money to cater anything in my life um, because I'm a full-time writer creaking along with my creaky career <laughs> obviously I'm doing it wrong so I must pay attention to this woman who had made two hundred two thousand six hundred dollars at book sales at her launch good for her Attend book fairs and festivals. You have to adjust your schedule to make this work, but it's worth it. You'll sell books, meet lots of people. Um, she got people to stop by her book, but she made a short trailer about her book and then struck up a conversation. Well, I have done this tactic for 20 years. Um, uh, and when I have the Horror Writers Association booth, uh, we have made trailers for our anthologies and sometimes we'll have them playing. I've never made $2,000 in book sales at any. I'm lucky to make twenty dollars at a book fair or festival so again she's got it going on I sure as heck don't um, also to make two thousand dollars in book sales if you figure what's oh, let's do the math okay okay let's say on Amazon because she's self-published so let's say you get four bucks a book four dollars a book so how many books do you have to sell what's that 500 books you have to sell and so if you're getting four dollars a book your book probably costs ten dollars so to have 500 books to sell to make your four dollars per book you have to have five thousand dollars to buy those books before you even go to these festivals so you can sell your books so you can make your two thousand dollars I think that's pretty much a very loose 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 mathematical equation but again this shows I don't know many writers who have that five thousand dollars lying around unless they're working full-time or have a rich spouse or have an inheritance market your book everywhere you go my t-shirts ask me about my book my book is awesome guess what I wrote a book uh, and she said she wore them everywhere she sold books from her backpack in the trunk of her car and she made five hundred dollars in book sales this way good for her I personally know that here in Canada when we see people wearing those types of shirts we laugh at them I don't know if anyone's ever sold a book <laughs> that way even if you're at a book fair selling your books <laughs> let alone just wandering down the street or have the magnets on your car or whatever so again depends on your personality and of course you have to have a trunk full of books to sell them so to if you make five hundred dollars in book sales and again do the math how many books do you have to pre buy to make that five hundred dollars again you need a couple grand lying around to buy those books so that you have them in your backpack to sell when you're wearing your thirty dollar t-shirt that you hand designed okay 
and this is the one that irks me the most. <laughs> Turn your book into a play! <laughs> And then that's how she made her $125,000 in one night. And she goes through the whole list. She bought billboard advertising. Mm-hmm. She bought advertising time on radio and TV. She did crowdfunding sites to sell tickets. She did radio and TV appearances. She sold tickets on Groupon and Ticketmaster, which, again, you have to pay a fee for. And again, you have to be someone who people actually want to see and care about. I know if I suffered your own, I only have about 25 published books. No one knows who the hell I am. If I'm making a group on for tickets for my play based on my book that I did myself down at the corner pub or where, wherever this play is happening, no one's buying. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, mean, I got to look at my positive thinking uh, videos again, I guess, because uh, I I don't, uh, this is again, sell VIP after party tickets. Okay, well, who's paying for this after party? Who's uh, paying for all these tickets? Who Who's buying these tickets? Again, I can't even imagine trying to sell a ticket to an after party to a play based on my book. I would be so thrilled people came. I would uh, certainly never sell tickets. So I guess it's all about gouging your friends. Um, so anyways, kudos to this person. She obviously is very wealthy to set up all these billboards. I can't even imagine like, a bill, like what would, uh, I, I'm linking to this article, but purchase billboard advertising in select cities where the play will be performed. Like, I, I've heard about people buying um, advertising, you know, how they have the commercials before movies. I've seen books advertised a couple of times way back when self-publishing was started. And it'd be like, oh, wow, how much did that person have to pay for that <laughs> book, for their Kindle book, uh, for that advertising? It's, again, a very, uh, you got to be rich to be rich, right? So yeah, so she earned $125,000 the night of her play. The city of Baltimore and the mayor personally thanked her. That's what, 125000 U.S., I guess. So that's like 150 here in Canada. Then she book sales went up, TV show appearances, blah de blah And uh, so Crystal is the one who wrote this story. Uh, article Crystal L. Bass. She is the author of two novels and a play. Obviously the play is based on one of her novels and she teaches writing at Creative Writing University. Now one thing I do like about this is as there are 69 comments on her article because like I said it's been up for at least a week and she answers everyone and she gives advice and so on. So it's nice that she's interactive and engaging with her little article and uh, but I do find it depressing because once again it shows that you have to have money to make money uh, to deal with the type of things that she's talking about. Um, I know I personally, I, I, I struggle to get the money together to buy 10 books to sell at Fan Expo, uh, but that's my life and the way I operate because I do uh, try to ha earn a living as a writer and as an editor and I do some part-time jobs. I live in Toronto where it's very expensive to live. So again, that all factors into where you live and that sort of thing. So obviously too, if you live in Toronto, you can do things like Mount to Play at the Fringe Festival. You can do bookstore signings and events at book, you know, there's, we have a lot of independent bookstores. Um, you know, Glad Day has hosted the Horror Writers Association uh, anthology books several times. And uh, one of our members did pay for catering and stuff. But let me tell you, even though we had tons of people at all those events, I think maybe we sold 20 or 30 copies of book all together out of all the events. And we had entertainment, we had readers and speakers, we had free food um, and prizes, lots of gift prizes, gift baskets, and so on. So your mileage may vary. I hate that expression, but it really is an expression. So when you see articles like this, I guess is what I'm getting down to. When you see articles like this, read them, learn from them, but take them with a grain of salt because everyone's experience is different. Everyone's strategy is different. And a lot of, um, things, you know, that perfect alignment of the stars and moon and sun uh, for the writers 
um, it's a lot of luck. You know, the expression 99% perspiration, 1% um, luck, I mean, you know, whatever the calculation is, um, a lot of things are being in the right place at the right time, right? So obviously this author had the perfect storm of all the elements coming together. She had the money to deal with this. She has the talent that she writes books people want to read. She has the balls to actually get people who she thinks in her acknowledgments to actually buy her book instead of giving it away like most of us would do and so on. So and again it may also be the difference between the states and Canada because I know American authors are more aggressive uh, than the Canadian author and all these different things. So read these types of articles for information, you know, make notes, learn, listen and learn, and, but don't get discouraged and don't um, get jealous. Uh, read between the lines of this is obviously a wealthy woman who has a lot of connections. <laughs> Because I don't think any any of us can really like phone someone up and put a ad on a billboard. Like seriously, what's that five grand, right? So yeah. So I don't know if this is a writer's behaving badly or a writer's advice, but take it as you will. Okay. Have a great day, and let me know what you think in the comments about this article and uh, the advice. All right. Have a great day. Bye.